Hello my lovely hummingbirds and welcome back to another episode of Makeup and Motivation with uh, your lovely host Monroe. How's it going everyone? On today's episode we are continuing the sibling series with <laughs> I guess the final of the siblings but yeah today's uh, topic of conversation is going to be the black sheep of the siblings uh, and what more fitting look to go for than the Wednesday Adams dress. But <laughs> my jokes aside, uh, yeah, let's get into the look and I hope you like it. Hi, my lovely hummingbirds. For today's episode, we are using the ColourPop So Jaded palette. To kick off this look, we're going to go in there with that gorgeous mahogany shade Garnet. And we are going to apply that to the outer corner, making like a very big wing shape right there and just feathering it out. You don't have to apply a lot of it, just sufficient to give it a grainy, somewhat smoky effect. But make sure that those lines are a little sharp. Once you're done with that, we're going to go in there with Jasper. And that you're going to bring in from the inner corner upward so that... Essentially, we're trying to do a gradient effect on the eyes here, okay? Once that's done, because we need a little bit of a dimension there, we're going to go in with pearl on our inner corner, on the lid, and up towards the inner part of the brow bone area because you know you got to look fierce you got to look magnetic you got to look like you are pulling attention with your eyes because you are the black sheep <laughs> then you're going to go in with a diamond and that is going to go on the upper brow bone area really as a like highlight to bring a little more glimmer and glitz and definition because if you're going to take down everybody you got to look glam as you do it Once that's done, we're going to go back in there with the shade Stoned because after someone sees you, my lovely black sheep, they don't know what hit them. And we're going to put that on the inner corner of our eyelid to really make it pseudo smoky effect, right? Because you are a badass at night and by day you're still a badass, but you know, you just, I don't know, can't live in perpetual smoky eye all the time. <laughs> And then for this part right here, we're just taking a little bit of the garnet and dabbing it on the eyelid area. As I said, we are creating a gradient effect. So this step is super important, but alas, the most important of all the steps is always the blend. And when you blend, make sure you are blending from light to dark, depending on the desired effect that you wish to have. Also, light to dark helps avoid any like muddying of the colors. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the rest of my face, but in the meantime, you can go ahead and follow me on all of my handles. And there she is. It's giving vavavoom. It's giving sharp as a knife look. It's giving cat eye. It's giving gorgeous. It's giving I will end you if you hurt my siblings. <laughs> my lovely hummingbirds, if this is where you're leaving me, les mando mucha paz, muchos besos, y les recuerdo que miren hacia la luna, sending you much peace, many kisses, and reminding you to always look up at the moon. I love you all so much. I hope you enjoyed the makeup look. Right now, we are going to jump into the pop culture episode. Hello, my lovely hummingbirds. How's it going, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Makeup and Motivation here on... Pop culture with I, your lovely host, Monroe. How are y'all doing? I hope you absolutely love the makeup look. <laughs> Uh, for all those listening solely on Spotify and other podcast platforms. If you haven't gotten a chance to look at the Black Sheep makeup look yet, you should definitely tune into YouTube and check it out. My glam aside, <laughs> 
for today's episode of Pop Culture, we are not only discussing the Black Sheep as part of the sibling series that we've been covering on Makeup and Motivation, but also we are going to be covering child stars and where are they now? Well, not a where are they now because I didn't like look up a bunch of child stars and see what they're up to but more so the concept of child stars and how we have often found them in media especially like you know they end up doing a lot of shit that well I mean drugs and mental health spirals and just like being all over the place right and you know I just thought that with us covering the black sheep today as part of the sibling series that just felt like the route to go so we're gonna get into that but before we begin I would appreciate it if you all join me in a moment of silence for the following individuals Eileen Saki, Gordon Lightfoot, Barbara Bryan, Thomas Kong, Samantha Hutchinson, and Sonia Bizarro. Please join me all in a moment of silence. Thank you all for joining me in that moment of silence. I greatly appreciate it. Now, let us begin. Why are we covering the topic of child stars? Well, <laughs> I feel like at this point, all the millennials and some of the Gen Zs, we kind of grew up around it. It was you were either a Nickelodeon kid or a Disney kid or a PBS kid or whatever, right? And with that, we saw a lot of stars that we know today pretty much grow up with us. From Lizzie McGuire to Hannah Montana to <laughs> or Miley Cyrus, the Jonas Brothers, uh, Drake and Josh, to Demi, to Selena, to even artists like Taylor Swift and people across all forms of media. Now, one of the common things that seems to happen with a lot of child stars is they end up being used and abused in the industry and not always just by the industry, but also by the people that are supposed to be taking care of them, like their parents. As noted in Jeanette McCurdy's book, I am glad my mom died. And Recently, there was a thing that came up about how, you know, the Dalai Lama was in this whole scandal over basically telling a kid to suck on his tongue as a joke. And over the years, especially the past few years, right, because of TikTok being so predominant and being marketed as a app for youth, uh and you know seeing how much like thirst traps and all that shit but i'm not talking about like the adults that make the thirst traps and then they're like you know their page can only be seen by people 18 and up and all that stuff and they have the restrictions apply to it and all that good shit i mean like there's 15 year olds and all this stuff and people are like well is the 15 year old really doing a thirst trap or are they just having fun with their friends and why are you seeing a child as something provocative? Now, we have seen hypersexualization of like teens since back in the 90s with like, I mean, if you really think about it, like look at everyone that was part of the, oh my God, what was it? Mickey Club, the fucking mouse house <laughs> with like Justin Timberlake and Britney Spears and like Christina Aguilera and a bunch of other people. When you think about the fact that like Britney was a teen when she was performing I did again and things like that and then like even in sync I mean they were teens when they started and of course you know they're a boy band but not just the teenage girls that were cheering for them were hypersexualizing these men I feel like there's this thing right in media as a whole where like I don't know how to say it but essentially a lot of people just wait for them to get over that bridge and then 
boom you're an adult now but it's like are you really and that has to do a lot with like the way that well society just views humans as a whole but the reason we're also covering this is because we have seen you know people that started off as child stars try to make the change into re acclimating themselves with who they are as individuals and adults outside of their characters because one of the things that's also very prevalent is like fandoms and people seem to often forget that like these are simply people doing a job of like portraying to be a character and it has caused like oh my god who was the fucking kid from game of thrones that he ended up having to like quit show business altogether because the hate was so strong for his character that, like he couldn't fucking go anywhere and i think even like dolores umbridge had dealt with <laughs> i don't know the actress's name oh my god i'm horrible but you know umbridge had dealt with it and apparently she's a very very sweet woman in real life but it's like people have a really hard time for some reason distinguishing the character from the person and for child stars i mean as a child right as a kid when not only are you told that like you trust adults adults mean you no harm and all this stuff but then it's like if you are in the entertainment industry it seems that like all bets get thrown out of the fucking window and as someone that is trying to <laughs> and wanted to like be in artistry and in the entertainment industry since I was a kid I look at it now and I'm like damn why is my father protecting me this entire time for his own like reasons of like shit he had seen or whatever when he was younger but and just to clarify no my dad's not in the entertainment industry or nothing like that that's I, I have reasons for saying what I said but I think the topic of the black sheep encompasses what happens to a lot of child stars what has happened to a lot of them like miley was twerking on fucking robin thick on stage at the mtv awards because of blur lines and it's like oh my god what is happening to her and, da -da -da, and where are her parents and blah 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 well realistically i feel like one every teenager rebels right and if you are made to grow up really really fast as you're doing all of this like important work in the public eye there comes a certain disconnect with like those traumatic experiences and you're trying to like as hillary duff stated on the podcast with josh pack she was like you know it's really important that like you end up finding the balance of who you were who you are and who you're becoming through it all and Josh went on to speak about how like he has even himself you know he is sober because he can't drink because then like drinking leads to his second favorite thing which is like Percocets or some shit and he, he talks about like the drug use and all this stuff and even Jeanette McCurdy spoke about how I think it was Dan Schneider when they were recording iCarly you know he would try to like induce them to drink and all this stuff he's like oh yeah the Victoria's kids party all the fucking time and they're drinking all the time and then you know obviously TikTok everyone's been like analyzing it now and they're like it makes sense why they were always fucking drinking coffee so much on the show because well people were running around fucking hung over and then even Jogia has even stated how like he doesn't remember filming half the fucking show because he was so intoxicated and it led to him to have all these struggles uh zendaya and bella thorne you know especially bella thorne she covered how like they would try to like pit them against each other and all this stuff to somewhat make it a pseudo competition and that has been resounded across multiple shows across multiple series across multiple individuals because to some degree right it's like sad to say but humans love drama right that's why novelas are such a thing uh, <laughs> we we love when things are interesting and in media and marketing they will use whatever sells and unfortunately what sells is drama and toxicity and chaos and all this bad shit 
things. Black sheep, when it comes to siblings, right? And and this is where <laughs> we're tying in both topics in together. So the black sheep sibling, and we're gonna cover it more in the like specific black sheep segment of this episode. As you notice, I'm no longer wearing the Wednesday Adams dress, but the black sheep ends up being the rebel kid to some degree because they are the ones that go against the family unit when it comes to child stars i feel like the black sheep essentially because of the press that gets revolved around them they are more idolized and thrown more into their chaos because they're like yes this is what's gonna make us money in media there is this like i don't know there's this disregard for like human wellness to some degree because from Jeanette McCurdy talking about like how they were being pushed to drink Tave and Joe you know remembering what the fuck they were even recording to like all the artists that then for example Amanda Bynes that, that is now in rehab right or was recently and even Ariana Grande talking about recently how you know everyone was like oh my god is she okay like her body she's looking real skinny all this stuff and they just kept being very like honed in very focused on that and she went forward and even made a statement on like tiktok and she was like you know that body that you're comparing my body to was my most unhealthiest she's like and i hope you understand like you're beautiful people have support systems if they are going through anything all this stuff which if she does have a good support system very happy for her i was very concerned i'm not gonna lie i saw it and i was like what's happening and then when she said that i kind of sat there and i was like damn i totally understand because god I'm getting real personal media and the reason why any of this matters and you're like Monroe why who the fuck cares right are in media are the biggest influences on the middle upper and working class societies and I'm not like talking about like the elite the bourgeoisie the celebs the people that like run essentially everything we consume I'm talking about like everyday people like you and me and you're like no that doesn't to some degree it does art has always been a catalyst for societal movement and push and all that shit like magazines if you can if you look through the magazines of the ages right you notice the like pattern almost of when they decide that someone is an it girl and when the it girl falls from the pedestal they were placed upon because well it's an in real it's an unrealistic standard that people are like expected to keep up because at the end of the day these celebs these artists these kids especially teen stars that are thrown into limelight are simply kids right even tom felton from uh, from the harry potter series malfoy <laughs> you know in his book he speaks out about his health issues and his struggles during the whole like fame process of being malfoy and <laughs> i'm sorry i was about to be like confirmation and i'm like wait wrong series but still nonetheless it's one of those things where like for everyone now entering the world of media and industry how can we make it better because personally when ariana went and spoke about like her body and all that stuff i kind of sat here and i was like damn i completely understand what she's saying because for me I have well one I have body dysmorphia so like that already fucks me up uh, <laughs> and for those of you that don't know body dysmorphia is essentially the notion of well not really having a sense or notion whatsoever of like the parameters of your body like I don't know how to explain it like the way that it works for me 
I have days where I can see myself for how I look, right? And how other people can see me and I'm very aware. And then there's days when I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh my God. And I get into this hyper fixed mode of I have to lose all this weight and I have to do all this stuff and I have to do this and I can't eat this and it is essentially a spiral and then there's days when I look in the mirror and then I'm like wow I am like the sexiest baddest bitch alive I'm losing my mind da, da, da. and then it cycles right and then there's days when I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like you know I get what people say aesthetically because then I can see like the symmetry and what is considered societal pretty and all this stuff and then I'm like I don't see anything and through the years and that's just a mental health issue on my part right but through the years I struggled heavy with a lot of extracurriculars and with personal health issues like my endo which having had it since I was really young and all that shit I was taking prescription meds from a really young age then as I got into the teenage years adding extracurriculars into the mix did not obviously help fast forward into my mid to current age my mid-20s to now I'm about to be 29 and I'm no longer doing all of those extracurriculars not really on any prescription meds unless absolutely necessary because of medical procedures and shit like that and what happened was I poofed and my weight fluctuations crazy which is also you know side effect of endo sad but true but when I was on so much medication and doing so many extracurriculars and all this stuff and I was also in sports and I was in dance and I was like always busy doing something right always walking miles a day <laughs> not to be dramatic but pretty much and I looked society wise like the hottest bitch ever right because I was skinny and I mean, I was, I was skinny, skinny. And when I kept doing shit I shouldn't have been doing in the first place, because it's not good. Kids, don't do drugs. Don't, like, overdo it with the alcohol. Don't do all this shit. Don't pop pills. Like, don't, don't do none of that, right? But when I was doing a bunch of extracurriculars, I was doing a bunch of shit I shouldn't have been doing. Not only was I already, like past the stage of baby fat from being a teen i'm entering into my 20s body's changing but because i'm doing so much shit i'm still i'm, I'm getting skinnier right and when i stopped doing everything and then i was on antidepressants because of mental health issues and then i started drinking because i had an adverse reaction to said antidepressant fucked me up not only did I gain the weight because it interacted with my symptoms from endo, the drinking didn't obviously help, and then I skyrocketed weight-wise. And now, while I am a... God, what was I this morning? I don't know. <laughs> and I am working on my health every day to like really get into a regimen that doesn't fuck up my body because, well... All of that fucked up history of what I put myself through, plus everything that I already was dealing with health-wise, plus just trying to like acclimate to the fact that I am in my woman body now and hormones are changing all again and all this shit. I like watched Ariana's video and I kind of sat there and one I cried, <laughs> cried my fucking heart out, and I was like, oh my god, I get it because. So one of the things that I've always said ever since I was young and like anyone that knows me personally knows this is true. I said, I remember I was watching a Victoria's Secret fashion show. I was like 10, maybe. I'm not adding that math correctly at all. Here was my age. <laughs> but it was one of the first Victoria's Secret fashion shows and I was just like, oh my God, I want to do that. And of course, like my siblings are like, bro, 
that's never gonna happen like you're you're tiny and which I'm 5'2 so obviously right I did not fit the height requirement but in my mind I was like one day somehow I'm gonna fucking do it and now they're trying to be more body inclusive and we're gonna cover that in another episode but <laughs> hi are you girl uh- <laughs> dead ass y'all like, i want to be a victoria's secret model it's so ugly but growing up in a household where eurocentric style uh blah, 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 the eurocentric style of beauty the what was seen in media as pretty was to some degree conditioned as yes because it unless unless it, the mindset was if you don't look a certain way, right? You don't act a certain way. Then you are either being disrespectful, you are not doing as you're told, so that means you're being rude to the fucking people that are older than you, you're doing this, this, that, and the third, and or you're failing in some way. And in media, right, it really does impact whether we like it or not. And you can sit there and argue (laughs) with me if you want about, no, whatever the fuck I watch doesn't, yes, it does. Yes, it does, because it is specifically designed to be retained in our minds so that we keep consuming content. We keep consuming media. We keep thinking of like, oh, like, I mean, everyone, not everyone, but everyone to some degree is impacted by the art forms that are in the world of celebrity in the world of media and we grab those and gravitate towards them whether it is because of nostalgia whether it is because of it's what is said that is trending and let's face it to some degree we all thrive off of approval and human interaction because we are human it's in our fucking dna (laughs) and we cling to it and we cling to those ideals and those mindsets of the way that we should act, look, talk, have influence over other individuals, the way we think, the way we retain information, the way we receive it, the way we give it, all this stuff. And because we are products of our environment. As a black sheep. And the reason that I feel like these child stars, right, that end up just like going off the fucking rails are the black sheep is because they're the ones that like sadly because of traumatic experiences did not have the ability to simply just grab and walk away they were thrown into it they were stuck in it and then they had to be like all right you know what fuck this shit we're gonna cause chaos because all they have been conditioned to do is thrive in that chaos and then they start to grow and then you know learn and life happens and all this stuff and then they're like damn well i'm an adult now and i need to get it together (laughs) and for my black sheeps out there if you're the black sheep in the family then you know this to be true i feel like you know i yes celebrities have money and whatever and probably more readily available resources and all this stuff but at the same fucking time regardless of the resource that is available it's this concept of like even if the sources are there if the support isn't it does not matter right because they will keep looking for some form of approval or validation or something to numb the pain which let's face it when a lot of us were out here partying our fucking faces off like crazy uh and if you have mental health issues at some point it was to not feel what was inside your head and then at a point it was like damn i feel nothing i need to feel something right as the new generation (laughs) Because my lovely millennials, we're old, y'all. Cheers. Uh, We are the ones that are now climbing into the industries that we saw 
when we were kids start to build and grow? What is it that we can do to change things? What is it that we can do to really modify and disrupt the way that things have been done? Because clearly it hasn't been fucking working. If it were working, there wouldn't be so many fucking people with so many health issues in the process of it. And I don't just mean physical health issues, I mean mental health issues as well. Because mental health simply is just health. The brain rules everything over the body. Uh, because, you know, the brain and the spinal cord are the first two things that develop <laughs> as an embryo. So, but, <laughs> science! <laughs> mm. Yes, I know the tag is still on the bottom of my mug. <laughs> I've tried to like scrub it off. <laughs> Total tangent. I've tried to like scrub it off when I wash it. And then like I have this thing where like if I'm peel if I'm gonna peel the sticker, I I have to know that it's gonna peel off cleanly. Otherwise it's gonna bother the fuck out of me if like the little fucking sticky gummy residue stays on there. I yeah, so it it's just gonna stay there. Till Whenever the universe decides that <laughs> sticker needs to fall off the mug, anyway. <laughs> I got it. At the Sears Tower here in Chicago. Uh, yes, Sears Tower. Sorry, I don't call it Willis. Uh, <laughs> just talking about Willis. Uh, <laughs> but that's my question for you today, my lovely hummingbirds. How can we change things moving forward? I think that, in my opinion, right, one of those ways is better understanding of one another, open forms of communication, really looking from a, a space of, like, love and not, not necessarily hate, but more so not judgment, because, like, and it, after this, we're going to take a quick little break and we're going to jump into the sibling series of this episode because I go more into detail about the black sheep and all that stuff and <laughs> leading into that. But the black sheep is very, I won't say we're brazen, but <laughs> if anything, a black sheep is like, if you look around, at your friend group right and you have your one friend that you always go to and you're like hey friend this happened and you always go to them and you confide in them because like they don't judge you obviously if you're doing something stupid they'll tell you they're not gonna judge you they're just like mm, maybe don't do that right how can we, as a whole, as a society, move forward to cultivate an environment where, and I'm not even like talking about like people when they just say, oh my god, you guys are all so soft now and blah, 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 blah. My argument for that will always be, why does it have to be fucking difficult? <laughs> and as a person that like, if I am too emotionally stressed, my whole body's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know i that's why i'm also just like it, it doesn't have to be this hard like why are we making it so complicated for ourselves you know by a world that is simply just furthering into the way like that we receive information faster and not all the information that is out on the internet is good information not all of the information is bad information how can we move forward with a happy median of like one protecting our kids i don't have babies of my own i'm not a mom i am a god mom <laughs> i am an auntie and i don't want to say i weep for our youth but like i look at everything that is online i look at just the way that information is being retained and one of the things that recently happened because before like I am a nerd to this day and I don't just mean like I'm a geek as in like you know media stuff like movies and shows and all that stuff no I mean like Discovery Channel and History Channel and all that stuff. that was my jam growing up I was reading 
fucking the archaeological journal when I was a kid. Like, you know, I, uh, real nerd. Uh, <laughs> can't believe for it. It was great. But <laughs> that aside, recently went to the museum here of science and industry to the Pompeii exhibit with family. And I was looking at my little, my little nephew and getting him to like slow down and look at artifacts and all this stuff he was like no take me to the tv they're saying stuff there and i was just like looking around at all the other kids and besides the ones that were on like a school field trip and had to look at the artifact for like a lesson everyone was also on the screens and i'm like sitting here and i like look at my brother at a point and i'm like yo how can we make it so that like this is fun and can retain his attention and he's like honestly the only way i can see it would be through media and I was like, you know, going over it in my head <laughs> of the topic I was going to discuss on here and all this stuff. And I was like, yo, that is so true. Like, in order for us to make change, right, as a whole, and not to put it all on my Gen X's and millennials out there, uh, <laughs> and pretty soon the Gen Z's too, because apparently... Because apparently, if you were born in 2002, you are already or about to be 21 and can drink. And I don't know how I personally feel about that. I feel old. But <laughs> what can we do? Right. And again, this is a conversation. Y'all can put it in the comments, whatever. What is your take on it? What are your ideas, you guys? Like, how do you think that we can move forward together as a society and really one provide information that like helps people from the shit that we've learned to go into these industries and make change because like i don't know i feel like if we just keep doing the same old shit we're doing we're just feeding into a broken system and we already know the system's broken to begin with so I don't know let me know your thoughts on that but we're gonna take a break i'm gonna refill my caffeine and catch me on the next little slide <laughs> where we talk about being the black sheep sibling uh but to all my child stars out there if you ever end up watching this video for some reason i don't know universe <laughs> uh i'm sorry i'm sorry that and not just child stars and like celebs and stuff, but like anyone that was that grew up in the industries, right? If you were disregarded in some way, shape, or form from the bottom of my fucking heart, I want you to know that it wasn't your fault. It really, truly, genuinely was not. You deserve to be taken care of by the people that were supposed to take care of you. I hope that you are on a path to joy and happiness and healing. And I hope to all of my lovely hummingbirds out there that are or were in situations where you were disregarded at home, you were treated like shit, you were put as this, you were placed in, a, in situations where you had no choice but to rebel and dive more into toxic situations just to escape what you were dealing with it is not your fault it is to some degree sometimes not even their fault people are traumatized and they act it's it's the act of hurt people hurt people and there are opportunistic assholes out there and sometimes those opportunistic assholes end up being parents to people. I hope that regardless of the spaces that you came from, you continue to grow, you continue to learn, you continue to heal. And in your healing, you find that you are worthy to continue on living because you are. Because it does get better. Trust me, it does. Had I successfully done uh, what I had flitted across my mind to do last year around, well, 
a month or so from now, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you, my lovely hummingbirds, and having all this stuff and all this content that I'm going to make about information and all my endo babies would just, I don't know, I mean, probably get reworked to another endo baby. I don't know how the universe works. I just listen to the universe. But point is... It does get better. And while the moments of darkness are fucked up and they hurt and it feels like there's no way out, it does improve. You are able to heal. You're allowed to want to exit those toxic situations you're allowed to heal you're allowed to do better for yourself however you deem that to be and you it is your right to love yourself so much that you choose to heal and bring forward to light the bullshit that hurt you if you were so inclined to do so, but also tell those people to go fuck themselves because you should not suffer. And this is for everyone out there. You should not suffer at the hands of the people that are supposed to take care of you. You should not suffer at the hands of the people that are meant to be there for your protection. And you definitely should not be suffering at the hands of the people that tell you, I love you. Because love does not hurt that way. Okay, that's it. I'm done rambling to y'all about this. Uh, but yeah, literally it's going to be like a five second break. Oh, follow me on all my handles if this is where you're leaving me. We're going to jump into the black sheep sector. I'm going to do a little... Uh, tarot reading afterwards and yeah that's it okay I love you so much my lovely hummingbirds as always les mando mucha paz muchos besos y les recuerdo que miren hacia la luna sending you much peace money kisses and my needs always look up at the moon I love you so much I'll catch y'all on next week's episode and if you only stick around for a month if you only stick around for makeup and motivation, uh, but if not, I'll catch you tomorrow on a grain of salt for our pick a card <laughs> that was supposed to happen last week, but shit's been crazy. I've been out here just really working my schedule of recording and editing and again, one woman show, so it's been wild, but yeah, that's it. Uh, and stick around for the black sheep segment if you are so inclined uh i love you i'll catch you in the next one bye <laughs>
a little bit of luxury with a little bit of rock and roll, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard it all. Today we are going to dive in as we did in the previous week with the pious daughter. We are going, sorry, jeez, the pe peacemaker, peacekeeper. Blech. If you are the pious daughter and you came over to see what the fuck the black sheep is all about, hi, welcome. <laughs> That was a random little intuitive message there. Uh, do you like my little earring cuffs? Aren't they so cute? So pretty. So, what is the black sheep? More often than not, the black sheep of the family is also the karmic child. What is a karmic child, you ask? Well, a karmic child is this like relatively new notion where in every family, there is one offspring where they are not inherently the worst traits of their parents because i don't want to say that that's mean and that also kind of stings a little bit on a personal level but <laughs> essentially you are the mirror to the more problematic parent in the parent dynamic and oftentimes to both parents you bring forward through the best parts of yourself, the worst parts of them. Things that either they were very insecure about, things that they struggled with personally, uh, same type of attitude, same type of like energy when it comes to confrontation, things like that. This is not something so much that is done with the pious child nor the peacekeeper because the pious child is very like, uh, more so under the people pleasing concept of like people pleasing in regards to keep everything going smoothly and the peacemaker just doesn't peacemaker peacekeeper doesn't want shit to do with like any form of confrontation very like can't we all just fucking get along type of energy and then the black sheep <laughs> is very confrontational because they see they are also more often than not the gen the first generational curse breakers. They are the ones that will essentially branch out the other siblings to then follow suit and also start breaking their own form of the generational curses that are in place. The black shape, however, does it not so subtly. They are very in the face. They're very like, uh, no, you fucked up and I'm going to make you realize you fucked up because how dare you put this on me type of energy. And it's not always with like anger and hurt and hate. It can start off that way though. But the more that they start to grow and develop and learn new things along the way, especially about the traumas that are dealt with by the parents, there comes this like sense of understanding. The black sheep, while the pious child was essentially put as like third parent or second parent or, you know, parent in absence of parents, they were also the ones that left home first, right? Because they were like, well, fuck this. They are the ones that are essentially held in the regard of the example child. The peacekeeper kind of left to their own wiles. They're the ones that to some degree get backed out, backed up out of situations the most by the parents. I was going to say parental figures. Sorry about that. My eye has been like bugging me. Uh, so I had to like go and touch my eyeball off camera <laughs> I have contacts uh and I had to like just wiggle shit around anyway my gross eye stuff aside the peacekeeper is very like they're the ones that get backed up and out of situations the most by the parents uh to some degree can be out of guilt uh or preference because they seem the most peaceful of the children in comparison, but also seem to be the ones that need the most help. And with the black sheep, 
oftentimes after the pious child has left the coop, the peacekeeper ends up taking over. And the black sheep is not just simply a product like of their environment because they were raised by their parents, but because they were raised by every single person in the family unit. They didn't get the traditional parenting styles. They didn't get essentially the same level of attention or there were other varying factors that impacted the parent-child dynamic. With the black sheep, they are often closest to the peacekeeper least close to the pious child but also very on their own and they are oftentimes the one that will go outward and make their own family unit outside of the ties that bind <laughs> outside the traditional family unit oftentimes they are also their brother and or sister's keepers they are the ones that inadvertently get placed the task of you're going to have to take care of everybody. You're going to have to do everything. You're going to have to keep shit in order, which is very ha 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 ha, but not funny. Ha ha. <laughs> it's very like, what the fuck? Because on the outside of the family dynamic, the way that the black sheep is portrayed is nobody really fucking trusts them with anything. Nobody really uh, cares about them to that degree of like actually putting responsibilities on them. Nothing like that because they're the ones that are the wild child. They're the ones that are always out partying, always doing X, Y, and Z, never at home, absent, so to speak, and all this shit. But then in private, the parent unit will then go forward and say, hey, you know, when I'm gone, it's on you to make sure that everybody's together. Hey, when I'm gone, it's on you to take care of your mom or your dad. It's on you to take care of the house. It's on you to do this. It's on you to do that. And oftentimes the reason that the black sheep is so I don't want to say abandoned because that sounds so harsh, but it's the easiest way to explain it. The sensation of abandonment where like you're left alone to your own wiles and good luck out there in the fucking world type of energy is because they are the most trusted by the parent unit to actually handle their own shit. Which sadly leads to some issues because then there becomes this divide whether that is because of health issues where or some other form of like drastic outside circumstance that caused the black sheep to grow up very quickly to take care of themselves to realize that like their parents could not provide in some way shape or form and same for the parents uh or because well yeah it, it usually is influenced because of outer circumstances where this kid is essentially left to like to some degree figure it out and then when the parents come back around to try to like wrangle them in and have some hold and some tie it's like well you can't because who raised them it wasn't you entirely and it wasn't your other kids entirely. So how did they learn everything that they know? Oftentimes it happens outside the home because the black sheeps are also the most likely to end up in toxic relationships, in relationships with people much older than them in order to fill the parental void. They are the ones that are most often linked to mommy and daddy issues. Uh, they are also the ones that end up in most abusive situations and end up with any form of sushi. And all this still puts them in place to be the one to get it together at the end of the day. And 
a lot of the reasons why the black sheep often stays in very toxic patterns is because they have had to figure themselves out their whole lives. Now, the black sheep does not always start as the black sheep. Like any one of the siblings in the dynamic, they are a product of their environment. Depending on at what stage of the siblings they fall in, as well as the parent-child dynamic. Black sheep will never be the golden child. They will never be the preferred child. They will never be the favorite. They will be their parents' confidant. They will be their siblings' confidant. They will more often than not end up being the therapist's friend. Uh, they will fall into the sensation of, not a sensation, sensation is not the word I'm looking for, sorry. Uh, they will more likely than not fall into aspects of people pleasing in order to just get through the situation versus actually wanting to keep someone else happy. It's more so of like, if I keep you happy, it'll just be done with. The black sheep often starts out as the kid that needs the most attention. They start off as a very sweet, loving, often bullied, tender kid. They are the very artistic ones and artistic to the point of like, they want to actually do something with their art and make a living off of it and all this shit. Does not apply to everyone, but black sheep will always be the ones that will first and foremost follow their passions. One, to stick it into everybody's face that fuck you, I did it anyway. And also to be like, damn, I gotta prove this to me. That I can do something with it. The black sheep are, like I said, a little bit of luxury and a little bit of rock and roll. They are the ones that will go to bat for their siblings regardless of whatever the situation may be with the sibling dynamic at the time uh and they are also the ones that are the harshest with their parents oftentimes they are also the ones that are there more so at the end of their parents lives than the beginning of their parents lives they are the ones that gravitate towards the home towards the end so what is the black sheep well the black sheep is essentially defined as rebellious what is rebellious rebellious is the following <laughs> uh yeah very i'm sorry i'm like out here just causing chaos on my desk they are the ones that resist authority. They are the ones that are very against, I don't want to say against the establishment, but against the established rules. Not in the sense of just simply being like, no, I don't want to fucking do this. It's more so like, why am I doing this? Give me a reason why. Tell me, why does this work? If I don't think this works and it's not good for me, I'm not going to fucking do it. So why are you telling me to do it? Give me a reason. They are the ones that are more pushback. The black sheep are also hard on the outside and mushy on the inside. <laughs> and if you are the black sheep of your family and you're watching this and you're like, bitch, why are you telling people this? I'm sorry, I love you. It's time we all come and face it, y'all. We are some of the most sensitive hard asses in existence it's great we'll be a hard ass but we'll cry about it later <laughs> jokes aside the black sheep uh color palette in my eyes in my opinion is black red green orange yellow turquoise fuchsia <laughs> always a frazzled demeanor always perpetually late to life uh, most likely, as I mentioned, to do any form of sushi or a battle with their demons openly, 
publicly on social media. <laughs> but also, when it comes to the family dynamic, they are the ones that crave closeness so strongly. Uh, they are they are the ones that also go for blood. What does that mean? <laughs> well, in the sibling dynamic, you have the pious child, which we covered. We have the peacekeeper, which we also covered, and the black sheep. In that sibling dynamic, and I'm sorry I didn't mention it in the other two videos, but I'm mentioning it here. The pious child will hope so. Let's set up a scenario. Say you have the parental unit and then you have other people in the family and say people in the family are talking shit and it's coming at the parental unit. Parental unit will avoid telling the kids, right, to protect them and all that. And when asked, why don't you just tell them? The response will be the following or similar. Well, if I tell the pious child, they will hold resentment and blah, 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 and stop talking to these people. Cool. If I tell the peacekeeper, they're going to put their foot in their fucking mouth, try to get involved, and then things will end up being a little more chaotic instead of just letting it be and then simmering and disappearing. If I tell the black sheep, the bar is in hell. And they will go for blood and make them and every following generation for the next 20 generations over at least regret it until the day they die. So, <laughs> the black sheep is often the ones that will call people out on their bullshit, will admit to their own bullshit because they know that humans are not perfect. We are all flawed. And more often than not, they have been in situations where there is no choice but out. There is no choice but through it. And more often than not, in situations where there is no black or white, it is all a gray area. And that requires a lot of tough calls. So, for my lovely black sheep. How do I start this? It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Don't you fucking turn off this video. Don't, don't change it. Don't lower it. It is not your fault. What happened to you, what they did to you, what you did to yourself in moments to survive really fucked up situations is not your fault. Oftentimes, wasn't even their fault. It is okay to grow. It is okay to heal. It is okay to take time and space for yourself when you need it the most. And it's okay to ask for help. Just because very early on you saw the people that were supposed to protect you against the evils of the world incapable of doing so does not mean that you have to do it all on your own forever nor does it mean that help doesn't exist for the things you're struggling with now. There is not a perpetual solution to everything. There is not a band-aid that is just a fix-all that you could slap it on and done. It's okay to say you don't have all the answers. It's okay to say you need love, you want love and affection genuinely and it is okay to be happy it's okay to do things that make you smile it's okay to do things that bring out the best of you and it's okay to cry too <laughs> do not lock yourself up in a metal box of your own construction because it feels safer than being you. You don't have to dim the parts of you that were once shuttered down by the same people that were supposed to encourage you to build them up. It's okay if you don't have it all figured out. And it's okay that you're taking every day to learn yourself again. 
and keep going forward. To the pious child and to the peacekeeper. On behalf of all the little black sheep out there, thank you. They might not say it all the time, but they love you. And they are grateful for you. And while they might not live up to the expectations that you yourself have put in place for the way that you think things should be, they will always figure it out and they're going to be okay. It's okay to listen every now and then to a perspective different than your own. Even children have answers too, and we can learn from everyone. I know it requires a different, different level of peace to deal with a black sheep. It requires a different level of patience. And it requires a different level of thought process to even remotely try to grasp where theirs is at. They do thank you and they are grateful, but they are also sorry that you were thrown into the role of a parent when you didn't need to be, especially at such a young age. It's gonna be okay. They'll figure it out. You don't have to worry so much and don't be so envious of them every now and then and don't be so angry at them when they're out here doing everything that you never got to do and everything, blah, blah, and this, that, and the third. The only difference between y'all and them is simply that the black sheep is choosing to do what they want to do, regardless of what people will say or think. Because they've already been demonized by you and the parents. So fuck do they care if the world says anything else about them too. That's it as far as the channel and messages go. My lovely black sheep, stick around. We're going to do a tarot reading for y'all with the Ask Yourself Tarot because, you know, who else do you ask if not yourself first, which you always have done. <laughs> also, I do want to say for the black sheep, uh, it's not just all about dark colors and rock and roll and angst and all that good shit. Yep, it is that, but then it also becomes very, like, bright and poppy and <laughs> fun like there's no in between it's either uh god what's the word i was gonna it's either anarchy or oh my god look at me i'm a bubblegum pop princess um <laughs> but yeah we're gonna use the ask yourself tarot deck today i absolutely love this deck it's so pretty um, and we're gonna get whatever messages are needed for you, my lovely black sheep. We're gonna cleanse the area with some incense right now. I need some water right now. <sighs> Very nice. So we're gonna look at it, it's so pretty. What do my black sheep need to know, baby? What do the black sheep need to know? So there's this scene in Harry Potter in the Goblet of Fire. Uh, where they go and they enter the tent for the Quidditch World Cup. And Harry walks in because he's like, how are we all going to fit in this fucking tent, right? Human mind, muggle mind. And they go in and obviously it's expanded because there's a fucking extendo charm on it or whatever. And he's like, oh my god, I love magic. And I sat down and as I was walking in, there was like no smoke coming off the incense. And as soon as I sat down and I was like, okay, let's start this reading. All the smoke starts coming up. And I was like, <laughs> and I remember that scene. It's like, I love magic. Uh, you probably like your butter. <laughs> Hi, if <laughs> you do. Oof. My babies. Okay. Yeah, we'll take you out too because you want to come out. What does my black sheep need to know? Whole lot of, whole lot of swords there. Whole lot of swords there. Oof. Can we 
clarify it. Six of Swords here. Oh, babies. A little chaotic right now, huh? Okay, one more. Can I get one more for the overall? Interesting. Okay, Eight of Swords. Knight of Swords. Okay, so the reason that I love this deck, uh, I don't take reversals with this deck because it has messages on the cards, has like questions, things like that. I personally love it. If it does come out in the reverse, it depends on like the vibe of it, but I say all this to say, <laughs> not the sun and the moon. Jeez. Okay. Okay. This is your reading. <laughs> so, your overall message is the hanged man and the nine of cups. The hanged man. What situation in your life do you need to look at from a different perspective? And nine of cups. What situation in your life is bringing you emotional fulfillment? What came underneath those as I was like putting the cards away was the moon card, which is why it's kind of like underneath them in your overall reading. Uh, what situation in your life do you feel is secretly being hidden from you? We're going to get into why I feel like this is your overall message, but let's first get into your reading in general. So where you currently are is the six of swords and Eight of Swords clarified by the Page of Pentacles and the Justice card. So, these these bad boys right here. Uh, also, a baddie. <laughs> Craziness aside. So, Six of Swords. What do you need to remove yourself from for peace of mind? And with the Page of Pentacles, what skill are you being called to develop? Eight of Swords, what situation in your life is holding you back? And Justice, what needs to be resolved and set right in your life? Let's let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going because I'm painting a picture and I feel personally attacked. Do you see the tear just slid out of my eyeball right there? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> your obstacle overall for this situation my lovely hummingbirds is the knight of swords and the page of wands knight of swords states what action needs to be taken to get something accomplished and page of wands what signs are preparing you to move into a new direction where you're headed boy oh boy the sun clarified by the four of swords which is very interesting. I am literally tearing up right now. I don't like this. <laughs> and then also the three of pentacles clarified by the king of pentacles. I mean, they do say slow and steady wins the race, right? <laughs> Crazy. So the sun card, what situation in your life is bringing you warmth and happiness? And four of swords, what aspect of your life needs rest and healing? My phone is like running out of battery. Hmm. Three of Pentacles. Who in your life is asking you to be open to cooperation? And King of Pentacles. What situation in your life is bringing you financial wealth and stability? <laughs> Me anxiously laughs. So your overall message with the Hangman Nine of Cups and the Moon being the clarifier. Where you currently are is a period of reassessing what you thought was supposed to be already. Now this can be relationship, these, this can be financial issues, this can be career, etc, etc, etc.
with six of swords being clarified by the page of pentacles it's time to let go of habits that no longer benefit you and start taking action on things that actually are going to build up your health, your wealth, your security, making those changes, starting to implement them now. There's this thing that I saw where it was like, uh, it wasn't the, it wasn't just manifesting, it was the law. It went beyond just simply the law of attraction, but basically, it is the act of living as your highest self. It is the act of no longer saying, oh, I will be this way when, it's I'm going to start being this way now so that when everything I'm manifesting comes into fruition, I'm already set for it. With the Eight of Swords and Justice, the big, big, big vibes that I'm getting from this is Let that shit go. Literally let go and let God. With the justice card being there, which also 11, you might be saying 11, 11 a lot. The question for both of them is what situation in your life is holding you back and what needs to be resolved and set right? You have been in this constant state of contemplation over this should have happened it should have been this way. And the only thing that that is making you do is stagnate yourself and not allowing you to move forward. God, my own TikTok keeps attacking me, but that's fine. A uh, TikTok that I recorded recently posted on Monday. Well, a couple weeks back. Everything always happens exactly as it should, even if not in the way we've seen. You, my lovely, lovely hummingbirds, are probably very intuitive. With intuition also comes this level of impatience because just because we're shown something does not mean it's going to happen right that second, nor does it mean that it's going to happen exactly as you have seen it. Oftentimes it can happen as a variation of what we've seen because, you know, the universe also has to get a laugh at it, <laughs> but more so because you can't control everything nor everyone. Your biggest obstacle being the Knight of Swords and the Page of Wands is like, it's time to start doing. It's time to start doing, it's time to start moving, it's time to start practicing on whether that is your art, whether it is a pitch that you wanna do, whether it is techniques to different forms of communication, especially with all this swords energy here, real big heavy on the communication, real big heavy on the throat chakra, real big heavy on the you need to fucking meditate. With the age of Aquarius, with all the major shifts that are happening now, it is no longer okay to sit back and wait for Prince Charming to show up and fucking bail you out of this bitch. And that is non-gender conforming. That is for anyone. You have always... I know you're tired. For all my black sheep out there, I know you're tired and I know you have constantly found yourself in a case of having to get yourself out of this shit. And you're like, damn, when is it going to be my turn? As disgusting as this is going to sound, you have to make it be your turn. You have to make it be your turn for you. And you have to make it so that you don't hold you back from the greatest thing that you've ever wanted to achieve. Because you're waiting on somebody else or you're scared that like, what if you fuck up? So what? If anyone out of this sibling dynamic knows better <laughs> than anybody that a fuck up does not mean you're fucking up, it just is a lesson that you need to take and build from, is you. So don't 
let the fears of that nor the fears of your success hold you back. Because what I'm getting is you're scared, not necessarily that it's going to go bad, but that it's going to go really, really well. It's okay if it does. It's supposed to. Fucking Abraham Hicks just started playing in my head because my life is supposed to go well. Go listen to that affirmation. Um, because you need it. You need to play that. And you need to really get into the notion of you deserve what the fuck is coming your way. Because you have worked your ass off to get there, to achieve the success, to build yourself up in this way. Whoever you were before and the mistakes that you made and the shit that came up, it doesn't fucking matter. Yes, you had to experience a lot of difficult shit in order to build who you are today. But all that hard shit you better than anyone else knows how to take accountability for yourself and say yeah okay you know what yeah that was me i did do that shit. i was a dumbass and then shift it into something beautiful don't let the what ifs bog you down when right now what you need to be doing is taking action and doing all those little things that are going to put you in a better place to the fulfillment of the reality that you want to create for yourself Not my cards all sliding down. Wheel of Fortune. What changes are entering your life and how are they a part of your destiny? I like them apples. <laughs> I know you're probably annoyed right now, but that's okay. You'll be fine. Not out here trying to fuck up my whole reading. Okay. And every now and then, but that's fine. With where you're headed, the sun, four of swords, three of pentacles, and king of pentacles. Uh -huh. So, a few months ago, even to a year ago, the universe kept telling you to rest, take some time, take a nap, heal yourself do what you need to do because you're going to be thrust into a moment of productivity and it's going to be great enjoy but you're not going to get any fucking sleep it's now it's happening now and it's happening quickly and what's coming with that is a collaboration from a very established individual they can be a mentor they can be somebody that's been doing whatever the fuck it is you're trying to do for a very long time for a lot of you this is a money offer a business deal very lucrative very incredible offer but with the hanged man the moon and the nine of cups it's gonna bring you clean the fuck out of your comfort zone you are literally going to be thrust into the life that you told the universe you wanted and could handle and there was i just saw 12 12 on the fucking clock as i said that you're literally going to be thrown into it now. You said you could handle it. You said you'd be up for it. Now the universe is basically telling you, okay, bitch, show me what you're made of. That's where you're headed. That's your overall message. It is time. So do not sit there and wait for this King of Pentacles. Do not sit there. I don't know why I heard King. I know why I heard personally why I heard King Cup. So we're going to leave that alone. Do not wait for your happily ever after to just swing in. You are not a damsel in distress. <laughs> I heard fucking um, Megara from Hercules. I'm a damsel. I'm in distress. I can handle it. Thank you. <laughs> I fucking love Hercules. Uh, I'm going to go watch that now after this reading. But... You have so much abundance. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I sounded like that when I said that. But you have so much abundance headed your way. You have so much prosperity. So many good things. But the reason why you were fucking knocking clean the fuck out. Because it's happening. And it's happening very fucking quickly. So quickly it's going to make your fucking head spin. 
And you're like, yes, I've been waiting, finally. Oh no. Oh, you are not ready. Is essentially what I'm telling you for this. Get up, start doing shit. Because while you panned out one beautiful thing for yourself and it was beautiful and it was grand and it was huge and it was an enormous opportunity for yourself, it's gonna pale in comparison to what's coming. The overflow abundance is gonna be amazing. But you're not ready. And that's okay, you're gonna work through it. You're gonna figure it out, you always do. But all those readings that you saw prior that were telling you that you were gonna have to make a hard fucking decision between a few different people, two different people specifically, Oh, it's now. And just because you thought it was going to be one way doesn't mean it is. It might be a completely different way. Anywho, that's it from me for today, my lovely hummingbirds. Uh, it's all going to be great. You have the world at your fingertips. It's amazing. It's all good. You're done with... It is going to lead to a death of yourself, though. Uh, the version of yourself that you thought it would be. Yeah. And you are going to have to be very open and honest with these people. Because they're both coming in. Quickly. That's it for me for today, my lovely hummingbirds. Uh, I'll catch y'all on the next one. As always, les mando mucha paz, muchos... Besos y les recuerdo que miren hacia la luna. Sending you much peace, many kisses and reminding you to always look up at the moon. I love you all so much. I hope that helped clarify some things. Uh, take a nap. Drink some fucking water. You're dehydrated. I love you, but you're dehydrated as shit right now. And yeah, that's it. Uh, enjoy. Have a good time. Enjoy life. Enjoy every step of the way live in the process don't just go through the process but really live in it and enjoy it and show gratitude every day because everything that you are experiencing you are meant to experience your moment of happiness is here now don't just let it pass by okay I love you. Have a good one. Bye.